Okay, so because we're in a new year, happy 2024, by the way, I felt like maybe a video on following through on your goals and how I've sort of over the past couple years have been really good at following through and manifesting the things that I want into my life. So I know that goal setting, especially at the beginning of the year, setting resolutions sounds so exciting in the beginning and everyone's off to a great start. Collectively, the energy is like on a hundred. But then by the end of the year, we're still in the same place that we're at. And so I do not want anybody's 2024 to look like that. I want us to level up. I want us to be catching flights. I want us to be building wealth, securing the bag, starting to invest and capitalizing on our wealth, finding love and healthy and nurturing, fulfilling relationship, caring for ourselves, our mental health, our physical health, and just overall well-being. So whatever it may be, whatever your goals are for this year, it is okay to set resolutions. Don't have people making you feel bad because you're one of those people that like get really excited about the new year. That's totally fine. You were allowed to set intentions as towards the things that you want to call into your life. I think intention is super important and not only intention, but action. And so this is what this video is all about. How are you going to show up and take action? What is the gap between the people that take action and realize their goals and those that don't? And by the end of the year, you're still in the same place. So let's get into it. First and foremost, we need to set clear and specific goals. I always say a dream not written down is a dream deferred. If you are not writing down your goals somewhere, if you don't have your goals somewhere in place where you're able to see them every day, you're able to visualize it, you're able to, to be reminded of what you're working on on a day-to-day -day basis, it's gonna be very hard for you to consistently show up for yourself and realize those goals. So when you are ready to set a goal, making sure that not only are you just saying that this is gonna happen, but creating and setting clear and specific ways as to how that will happen. I like to use um, this uh, goal setting method called the SMART goal. S stands for specific, so just being very specific as to like what your goal is. So I'm gonna give an example, right? Maybe it's paying off $40,000 in debt. Okay, cool, you have the number. What kind of debt, right? Being specific, I wanna pay off $40,000 in student loan debt by the year 2026, right? Being very specific and clear as to what it is that you're working on and why you're working on it, how you're going to eventually get there, the timeline. The Edmund SMART goal means measurable. So how are you going to measure the success? And so this may be, you know, having a budget sheet and regularly tending to that budget sheet maybe every week checking in with that budget sheet to know how far along you are to paying off this debt you want to make sure that your goal is achievable how do you know that you can like, afford to pay a forty thousand dollars in debt by the year 2026 well you probably have a job you have income coming in so you need to accommodate for that income that income that's coming in every two weeks I'm gonna be putting away this much towards paying off that $40,000 debt. Now we're getting even more and more and more specific and clear. When you get to the R, the R stands for relevant. So you have to just keep in mind that every action you take will be moving you closer to your goal. For example, a relevant goal will directly reduce your expenses. So maybe when you're budgeting, you're looking to see, okay, where are the areas that I am overspending? Where can I cut back? just so that we know that we are always working within our budget. And then last but not least, make your goal time-based. Now, I know for some people this may cause a little bit of anxiety, like, oh, I'm, you know, 2026, but like, what if it doesn't happen in 2026? Sometimes, you know, we give ourselves timelines that are a bit too constricted and that creates more pressure. And so I would give yourself some leeway, give yourself time, you can always adjust your goals. And that's something that I will talk about in a second, that, you know, just because you set a deadline for 2026 doesn't mean that it can't happen earlier or that it may happen later. It is just a benchmark. It is just a way for you to measure how far along you are towards achieving said goal. So setting a timeline, but not getting too hung up on the timeline either is gonna be really important for like a healthy, holistic way towards 
setting a goal and actually achieving it. So you can see that you're gonna set up to do something in 2024. It's okay if like you probably only make it halfway towards your goal in 2024. It's really the intention that counts and that you can look back at the end of the year and say, you know what, like I did the best that I can. If you can look back at the end of the year and say that, then you are farther along your journey than you having not set foot to start that journey at all. So really practice compassion and self-care as you work towards your goals, but just making sure like it will just make your life easier if it is clear and concise and it's very specific as to what goal you're working on and how you're really going to get there. Then I would say breaking down your goals, making your goals smaller. And there's a really good book I suggest on building habits. It's called uh, Atomic Habits by James Clare. It's a New York Times bestseller, very, very popular book. And in it, he really talks about breaking down your goals into smaller chunks. So a lot of the time we go after a really big overarching goal. For example, a big one for the New Year's is losing weight. A lot of people are like, I'm gonna hit up the gym and I'm gonna lose these pounds. I'm gonna get my six pack abs, whatever, blah, 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 blah. But saying that you're gonna go to the gym and lose 30 pounds is a very big feat, right? And a lot of people aren't really able to do that. I would say instead of going for the 30 pounds, start smaller. So you can say, you know what, 2024, I'm gonna lose five pounds. Much more realistic, much more reasonable and manageable. And you know what, when you get to the five pounds, you can continue to adjust and further extend your goal into burning more pounds and losing more weight if that is something that is important to you and that you wanna to work towards. So I think starting small, same thing with paying off debt. There's two ways to pay off debt, but some people like to start off by paying off their smaller debts first before tackling the bigger debts. Because when you tackle the smaller debts, you feel motivated to work on the next debt, right? The next smallest debt and then the next smallest one. And then you just keep on working your way up until all your debts are paid off. So it's much easier to work in chunks. It's much easier to work on smaller goals than really large, big overarching ones. And it just makes the process less daunting for you over time and really keeps that motivation and, and keeps the momentum going for a longer span of time. Then three, I would say try to stay organized. So finding, like I said, a dream not written down into dream deferred. Finding somewhere to keep your goals and your, your task in check, keep your progress in check, keeping track of deadlines. So this can be like a simple calendar. I love to use my Gmail to map out like when I want something to be done or when something's gonna be due, what day for my business I'm gonna be working on certain things. So I like to assign, you know, like Mondays is for recording my YouTube videos and writing my newsletters and writing whatever other content I have to do. And then Tuesdays, maybe Tuesday, Wednesdays, maybe like editing my videos. Then Thursday is scheduling out my videos. And then Fridays, maybe like reviewing how past videos have been done in efforts to create more engaging and exciting videos for my audience in the future. So it's really like having to map things out, being really organized, being strategic. You can't just say like, I'm gonna lose weight or I'm going to write a book or I'm going to pay off debt and you're not strategically staying organized and having systems in place to keep you accountable and to make keeping track of your progress easier. So calendars, having a to-do list, I love on my phone just using the notes apps, sometimes to set reminders, there's project management apps and tools. My favorite recently has been Notion. So I have like a business dashboard in my Notion and that keeps me really motivated and I go in there and I have the calendar for the year and I write out like okay well you know this quarter what do I want to achieve and that is actually something else that I'm going to add when it comes to breaking down your goals not only can you start off small by like how much of the goal you're trying to accomplish the larger overarching goal breaking that down into smaller chunks but then also breaking down the time frame. So you can create smaller chunk goals for different quarters. So like my first quarter of the year, I have a goal say for my YouTube channel to have, to maybe double my subscribers. So I have about 150. By the end of the first quarter, I wanna have about 300 subscribers. If I have more, great. If I have less, then I know I have things that I need to tweak and work on. But first quarter, I wanna double my subscribers. By second quarter, this is how much I want my subscriber count to grow. Third quarter, fourth quarter, and having like, 
you know, strategic steps as to how that's going to happen. How many videos am I going to post? What kind of videos am I going to post? And just keeping up with consistency around that. So, you know, whatever that may be, it's gonna keep you organized. It's gonna be really important having a place where, whether digitally or physically, where you have all your ideas and you're able to measure and track your growth is gonna be super, super important. So stay organized. And I would also say, in efforts to stay committed, I know it's just, it's so easy to say, just stay committed, be consistent. One thing I found that's helpful when it comes to being consistent is to have some sort of accountability, whether it's an accountability partner, so someone that holds you accountable, or other systems in place to hold you accountable. So for me, like I said, falling back to my Google Calendar, that's one of the first things I look at every morning, not as soon as I get up, but you know, after I sort of like ease into the day and, and have done some of those self-care practices, I will look at my phone, look at the calendar and see like, what do I have to do today? What's on the agenda? What do I maybe need to add to the agenda? What do I need to prioritize and won't be able to be done today because something new has been added to the agenda? Um, I love my calendar and I need to have those things in place because if I don't write anything down, nothing is gonna get done. I'm gonna forget things. Forgetting things will create this domino effect of you forgetting other things that were probably equally important and may set you back. So. Having something that's gonna hold you accountable, whatever systems in place, but then also people, right? So friends, family members, if you're working towards a goal, find someone that's also going to work on the goal with you or someone that is working already towards that same goal and wants to support you along the journey. Someone that's had lots of experience, maybe someone that doesn't have any experience, but regardless, having someone that's gonna check in with you on a regular basis to say, hey, Morgan, did you show up for yourself today? Did you do this? Did you not do this? Why didn't you do this? Okay, how can we get you back on track, get you back on board? Having an accountability buddy is one of the best things you can ever do for yourself and in accomplishing some of your goals. So I think that's probably one reason why going to the gym, for example, I love to take classes because I'm someone It's where it's easier for me to do a workout in a group setting than by myself. I'm more likely to get discouraged. I'm more likely to give up. But when I have, you know, a group of other people doing the same reps with me, it makes me really want to like, you know, I don't want to embarrass myself. I don't want to be that person that doesn't do the 10 reps. So it's like, it really motivates me to like be that person that does its best and puts in their best versus me being at home, no one's watching. It's like, okay, like I could just give up whatever I want to give up. And so this is, you know, we humans, we seek connection. We seek being liked, we seek community. Although it's not, not something that we prioritize as of late because of the system that we're in and it, it forces us to prioritize other things over relationships and connections and community. But it, at the end of the day, is the most fragile but most important part of our growth is having that accountability, being in community, having others support us. So definitely finding someone to provide support, encouragement, really, really important. Hiring someone like me as a coach when you're trying to start a business or you wanna to work towards those six figure, you know, that six figure business, those 10K months, you, you wanna find peace and wholeness and fulfillment within your life. You wanna find that dream career. You wanna build wealth, you wanna start investing, you wanna start saving, you wanna pay off your debts. Like these are all things that I've done for myself that I've accomplished in whatever ways that looks like for me, knowing that, if that makes you feel better, working with someone who has that experience that can help you get to that same place faster because they're coming to you with advice of having done it before and having someone who's really your cheerleader that's in your ear every day or whatever, every time I hop on a call with you, it's like, okay, oh, hey, where are you at? What do we need to work on? What do we need to celebrate because you're doing really well and how can we continue that and really just encouraging you along that journey. So I will always say it, I will repeat it until people's ears fall, fall off. Like support, number one thing, you cannot do anything. You can do things by yourself, but what's that saying, you know? I'm, I was watching this documentary the other day and I really like the saying where it's like, if, if you wanna go fast, go alone, but if you wanna go farther, go together. And that, that really rings true when it comes to working towards any kind of goal. Then I would say regularly checking in with your goals. So I think a lot of people at the beginning of the year, they're like, all right, I'm gonna work on this big thing. And they don't check in and monitor how that goal is going. Every couple, 
weeks, depending on the goal. Some goals, you know, are a bit more aggressive. You should probably be checking in with yourself more often, but you need to be checking in. Just like a budget that you would have for your finances, you have a similar kind of budget when it comes to all the other areas of your life. So it's like, okay, you know, whether it's that relationship that you're trying to foster, checking in with your partner, maybe every week, maybe at the end of the day. Hey, how was your day? What did you do today that like I'm really proud of? Or like, what did you do today that like maybe like really hurt me? Or like, I think we should work on. These are important conversations to have, not only with people, but with your money, with yourself and with your higher self. Really monitoring and checking in frequently where you are and where you still need to go and what's in the way of that or if things are going well, celebrating that and continuing that is gonna be really important. A lot of the times, you know, people don't save, they're not able to pay off their debts because they don't have a budget in place. They're not, they don't have a system or a framework where they are regularly checking in and adjusting and pivoting to life's changes. So that is really important. Stay flexible, right? Be open to adjusting your goals. If anything, if you take home anything today, it's this, right? It's that you can set a goal Sometimes that goal may not even be for you. Maybe you're setting a goal for something that maybe won't even really benefit you, but you're setting it because everyone else is setting it. One, but two, sometimes goals don't come exactly, we don't achieve it exactly what we think we're gonna achieve it. Sometimes we achieve it earlier. Sometimes it takes us a bit longer and that's okay. So be open to adjusting to your strategies, goals, life circumstances happen, priorities change. And it's essential to know when to adapt, when to pivot, and it's perfectly fine if you have to do so, okay? So that comes to my last point. And it's, you know, any goal that you're working towards, I know it's hard to stay positive. I know there's gonna be moments where you like, you feel like giving up, but try to stay positive and visualize, visualize yourself at the finish line. Visualize yourself, how will my life look like when I have accomplished that goal? And constantly keeping that in your, constantly keeping that vision in your peripheral. And I think the best way to do that is to, to, to celebrate your successes as time goes by, as time goes on. Every day, showing gratitude for what has happened, you know, showing gratitude for the things you're able to accomplish that day, no matter how small the task, right? Even for me, like, when I go to bed today, I'm proud that I showed up on Monday to record the video when I said I was gonna record it. And already that feels good to me because I'm being honest to myself. I'm staying true to myself. I said I'm gonna do something and I did it. And I think that alone, right? Practicing integrity, saying you're gonna do something and then doing it makes you feel good after because you start to establish this trust with yourself. And in trusting yourself, you start to gain you start to gain strength in leaning on your intuition and you trust yourself to see things through. And I think celebrating the small accomplishments, not just the big things, like yes, you will get to a point where like you'll find that relationship or you'll pay off the debt or you know, you'll, you'll lose some of the weight or you'll feel good, just feel good about your body. You'll stop the procrastinating and the overthinking and find mental peace and balance and well-being all of these things that we're working towards, it's not just like one day you're gonna get up and like, it's there. It takes consistent effort and work and thanking yourself, celebrating yourself every single day until you get there is just as important as celebrating yourself when you get to the end. So enjoying the journey along the way and not just the end goal and the end result or the day where that thing that you were working so hard for finally comes. And trust me, when that day finally comes, you're on to the next goal. You don't even really appreciate it. So really learning to appreciate your successes in those moments is gonna be equally as important as you showing up for it and consistently working towards it. So I hope that this was helpful. This has been the way that I've been able to really achieve a lot of my goals. You know, having these support systems in place, having systems and frameworks in place, using tools and platforms that help me to stay motivated, that keep me in check, that keep me organized, so that I know when I wake up today, I know what's on my to-do list, what I need to prioritize, what's gonna be most important, and what's not can be left for another day, you know? And just seeing in real time other people that are also working towards the same thing can be just as motivating. And just knowing that like, I don't have to be my best self every day, 
but being self-aware as to what that looks like and continuing every day to try to reach for that is just as just as what's the word is just as commendable it's just as commendable so take it easy on yourself i know it's a new year there's so much that we want to do and accomplish but we don't have to do it all and things will come in time the things that you're working towards your dreams the things that you want to manifest it's already here you just got to make sure to show up for yourself every day stay organized find the support you need and remember, a dream not written down is a dream deferred. So I hope that helped today. Make sure to like and subscribe and join the mailing list. And I'll see you in the next video.